Hello, my name is Callum, also known as Wanderlutes. Welcome to the latest video in my Minting with Manifold series. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to set up a claim page for NFT additions. Claim pages enable a lazy minting function, which means that collectors are the ones to pay the gas fee to mint the NFT directly to their wallet. Depending on the size of your edition series, lazy minting can drastically offset the cost of minting NFTs. These editions can be customized in any number of ways to help you as the creator expand your drop mechanic and express your creativity. In this video, I will also show you how you can use the claim page to airdrop editions directly into a wallet. The first thing you need to consider when setting up your claim page is what type of contract you would like the editions to be minted from. As you can see below, I have minted a new ERC721 contract and entitled it Callum Editions. This is separate from my original ERC721 contract, which I have been minting one of ones off of. For me, it made sense to separate my editions from my one of ones to make it clear to collectors which type of NFT they're buying. And also when importing the contract into different marketplaces, such as on Foundation, this will help to separate my editions from my one of ones to make it easier for collectors to see the difference. You could also mint an ERC-1155 contract, and I will explain why I didn't do that in a moment and how that makes a difference. If you have any questions about how to mint your contract with Manifold Studio, I will leave a link in the description below. First thing to do is to go to the Manifold App Store. When you get to your apps on the Manifold app user interface, you can go to the Claim Page app and click Install. When you go to install the app, you will give it permission to create assets, read your contracts, and read your collector information. Once the app's installed, you can click open to go to the claim page user interface. What's nice about claim pages is that it doesn't involve any code and it allows you to customize your edition drop in so many different ways. It's really up to you as the creator to inject some of your own creativity into drop mechanics so that you can make it interesting for your collectors to collect from you. You can also make it super simple. You can have open editions, limited editions. You can introduce allow lists and much more. I will get into all of that in a moment. To start, click create new claim page. And here you'll see all of your minted contracts so far. You can select which contract you'd like to use. For this situation, I'm gonna use my ERC721 contract called Callum Editions and click next. So the first thing you can see here is that I need to upload my token. I can then add artwork title, I can label which artist is creating it, and I can include a description and properties. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for a moment. Now you can see that I have uploaded my artwork. This is one of my favorite time lapses of all time. This is the first time that I shot a lunar eclipse. And I didn't wanna limit this to just one person, so I wanted to turn it into an addition to allow more people to collect it. You can see I have entitled this Earth Shadow, created by me, Callum, and I have included a description here as well. Something interesting about this collection is that it's going to be the first of three edition series. Anyone who collects all three of the editions will be able to receive a collector's edition as a thank you for supporting my work, which I will provide more information on at a later date. You can see here too that I was able to introduce all the properties down below, the same as in my other tutorial videos where I've shown how to do this for one of ones. So now that the art and the properties and the description are all ready to go, we can move on to setting the rules of the claim page. The first thing to consider is the price. I'm going to set this at 0.07 ETH and I have included my Ethereum address here that will be paid out. So the next thing to consider is the token supply. And this is where it matters what type of contract you have chosen. So if you wanted to use an ERC721 contract with an unlimited token supply, the tokens are not numbered. However, if I switch this to a limited token supply on my ERC721, and let's say I put it to 30, the tokens will now each have their own individual number. So that means when someone purchases the first token, they will see that it is token one out of 30 or two out of 30, three out of 30, et cetera. However, if you're using an ERC 1155 contract, the tokens will not be numbered and they will all have the same token value. So it's not possible for a collector to determine which token they are specifically purchasing. So since this is going to be a limited edition series and not an open edition, I have decided to use the ERC 721 contract so that a collector can see what number token they are purchasing. And I think that's just a nice way to allow people to select the 
token that speaks to them. And perhaps they have a favorite number or perhaps there's some additional value for having the first token in a series. I will leave that up to the collectors in the future. The next thing to consider is how long do I want the addition to run for? How long do I want the claim page to be accessible? Some people will do a limited timed edition. And what that means is that they might set the edition to only be open for, let's say, 10 days. And if the tokens are not purchased within 10 days, they can decide what they want to do with the rest of the tokens afterwards, or the claim page can just disappear and the token supply will be capped at that point. Sometimes what people do is they leave the token supply as open or unlimited, and then they have a specific limited time frame. This is often referred to as an open edition, but technically that is not an open edition, that is a limited timed edition. And what happens in that situation is someone can leave the claim page open for let's say 10 days, and if someone buys 1,000 NFTs, then the supply will be capped at 1,000. But if only 20 people buy it, then there will only be 20 tokens in the supply. So that's just something for you to consider as the creator. What type of edition series are you going for? Do you want to limit it in any particular way? And if you do want to limit it, are you going to limit it just based on the token supply or also by the time frame? Another way to limit is who can claim the token. So right now I have this set as anyone is able to purchase this because I don't want to limit this to a specific collector. If I wanted to instead have an allow list, for example, I can upload a custom CSV to specify which addresses are eligible to mint the tokens and how many tokens each address can claim. This is something that perhaps if you want to reward existing collectors, you can open up a new claim page and you can let your collectors know that it's available. And if they have uh, an existing token in their wallet that is on the allow list, that will enable them to open up the claim page and mint the token. Another thing to consider is do I want to limit how many tokens each wallet is able to claim? So in this case here, I'm okay if someone wants to mint all of the tokens, so I'm gonna leave it as unlimited. So now overall, I have my addition price set. I have the address that the money is going to go to. I have my token supply as limited to 30, an open time frame. it's gonna be open forever, and anyone is able to mint any number of tokens. And let's move on to the page itself. On the page setup, we're able to set a custom claim page URL. This will allow collectors to access the claim. So this is the link that I will be sharing. I can also connect my Twitter. This will allow my Twitter to be displayed on the claim page, which helps give the collectors more confidence when they're collecting my additions. I often use Twitter as a way to promote my NFT, so I'm gonna configure the connection now. There we go, just refresh the page. And now I can add the description. There we go, I've now introduced the description and we can move on to the final step which is the review and publish now before doing this i just want to note that the url cannot be changed later so make sure that you have typed it in correctly you're now able to notify your subscribers that you are going to have a new claim coming out so this is the description that would be sent by email to any subscribers to your claim pages you can customize what type of information is sent to subscribers of your claim pages in manifold settings so i will talk about that at another point in time so this is the final stage to be able to check to make sure that everything looks as it should so i really like the look of the artwork here i can see it's got the description that i pulled in the price the address the total token supply, the fact that it never ends. It's an open claim in terms of allow list. No one is prevented from purchasing this token. And it's also important to notice that we can edit all of the details of your claim, including the allow list and tokens after you've published. So this isn't the final step. You're still able to modify things if you go to check out the claim page once it's been published and you find that it doesn't look like you wanted it to. Now everything looks good to go and we can click publish. The first step to set up the claim is to upload the asset to Arweave, which is the decentralized storage that Manifold uses. This is similar to IPFS or the International Planetary Filing System, which is just decentralized storage. So it will be there forever. It can also be referred to as the PermaWeb. And now we are registering the extension on the contract to enable the setup of claim pages. Now we have to sign another transaction that is actually setting up the claim page itself. Let's go. We now have the claim page set up. So the first thing I want to do is check out the claim page to see how it looks. There we go. 
So you can see here, there is the subscribe button. So someone's able to subscribe to this particular contract so that whenever I list a new claim page, for example, Rebirth Editions 2 or Rebirth Editions 3, they will get a notification of it and get a chance to purchase it. It specifies that this is a limited edition collection, the price, and how many have been minted so far. On the claim page, we're able to click Expand, so we can take a look at the image in all of its glory. I think it looks pretty good. And one thing I actually noticed here is that the description is the description of the claim page, not the description of the NFT. So this is why we don't see the properties displayed and we don't have the full description here. So I'm actually gonna go back to my apps and I am going to edit the description to have the description that I was looking for in the first place. So I'm gonna copy in the full description here that I wanted and click save. There you go, now the page has been updated. Let's take a look, click show all. Now we have the full description that I was looking for. So this description will also be on the NFT and the properties will be on the NFT once the NFT is minted. At this point in time, the claim page is live but no NFTs have actually been minted. So if I want to mint an NFT, I can either go to the claim page and purchase it there, or as the creator, I'm able to go and I'm able to airdrop any number of tokens of the 30 to any number of wallets that I want to. So I can upload a CSV or I can add an address. What's nice about the claim page too is if you wanna to airdrop tokens to people, you can always go back and modify the token supply afterwards Though, of course, if you've already sold some NFTs, you should check with the collectors first to make sure that they're okay with it. I would say that if you've already sold a token, you probably don't want to modify the supply unless there's a very good reason to do so. Another reason that you might want to airdrop tokens is perhaps you want to send a thank you NFT to one of your existing collectors. So here you could include the address of your collector and you could airdrop the token, the addition, directly into their wallet. For now, I'm going to try airdropping one and see how that goes. So you still have to pay the fee in order to airdrop the token because I am actually minting this on the contract right now. And this goes back to the lazy minting functionality that we talked about at the beginning of the video. So if I was not airdropping this token and someone else was going to the claim page to purchase the NFT, they would be able to mint from the claim page directly and they would be the ones paying for gas. Now that I have one token minted to the contract, we can actually reopen the claim page and we can see how the token looks on OpenSea, for example. You can see it says now one out of the 30 has been minted. So it's got the contract title here, it's Callum Editions, and you can see that I now have token number one out of 30. There you go, so here is the artwork itself you can see now that it has Earth's Shadow, 1 out of 30. This goes back to what I was talking about earlier with using an ERC-721 contract versus 1155. Because this is an ERC-721 contract, I have the specific number 1 out of 30. If it was an ERC-1155 contract, it would just say Earth's Shadow and there would be no number beside it. This is where all of the traits have been populated. So it pulled all of the metadata from the NFT itself and the full description is here. And just a reminder that you're able to modify any of the aspects of the token, including the metadata itself with the description. You can add more properties. You can correct any typos. You can also modify the rules, the price, then the token supply, and the way that the page looks. So that's one of the great perks of using Manifold is that you're able to go back in and correct any errors after you have already minted the contract. And in this case, once you have already minted the claim page. For the token that's already been minted, the metadata can be refreshed and it will update the information displayed on the marketplace. Place. So there we have it. This is how you are able to set up a claim page on Manifold using their claim page app. I hope that this video was helpful and that you have a better understanding on how to set up additions, the difference between ERC-721 and 1155 contracts, and how you can use lazy minting to save money when you are releasing an edition set so that you don't have to bear the cost of potentially hundreds or thousands of minting NFTs. And you can kind of decentralize that cost by spreading it out amongst your collectors. Just wanna say thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you did find the video helpful, I would really appreciate if you could like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow my channel and these videos take a lot of time to put together. I really appreciate your support. And if you are looking for help with any other aspect of minting with Manifold, you can check out my tutorial series, which I will include in the description as a link below. Thanks again for watching this video and I hope that you have a great day.